what's going on guys so welcome to our saturday video which is usually reserved for not really music reactions just kind of behind the scenes stuff extra stuff and when we put out the last ren song uh kujo gets beat down you guys were all like if you really want to understand what's happening go react to ren explaining it in this like half hour long video essentially so i was like well that seems like a lot so then I watched like the first two minutes of it and went, you know what? This probably is a good thing to kind of put out there. So uh, the first two minutes I seen, the other 33 I have not. So we're going to watch it and see kind of really what he has to say. I, I enjoy listening to him just kind of speak in general. He's a very intellectual person when it comes to music and it's just life in general i i kind of like just enjoy like if he started a podcast i would listen to it because i just like his hearing his perspective on things so we're gonna jump into this man i hope you guys enjoy if you do make sure you like subscribe check out the patreon the merch store the football podcast support everywhere you can i appreciate it a lot but uh let's see what ren has to say about this now i'm curious all right let's see what he's got this is a video that i never ever really wanted to have to make, my music down. but it's very important for me that I do. All the time, artists all over the world pour their souls into their work, and that work is tainted by money or greed. A lot of you will have been asking me the question why Sick Boy has disappeared now as well as YouTube on streaming services. It's a video that was very close to me. It's a video that told my story about my health. It's a video that told the story of many other people who have been gaslit by the medical community. Uh, it's a story of greed in the music industry, ironically, funnily enough. It's also a song that I poured tens of thousands of pounds into for a music video, for promotion. It was also the leading title of the only number one album that I've got, so I was very, very proud of it. And we'll no longer have that song, guys. And I want to go into the reasons why. Also, I do recommend uh, sticking around to the end of this video because I've got a very exciting announcement about all of this that relates to all of this right at the end. People who have been following me for a while, they'll know the sort of person I am. They know the principles that I have and they'll know how I treat other independent artists. So they'll know why it was so important for me to have to make this video. And I want this to be as unbiased as possible. Obviously, I'm emotionally affected by it and that may leak in, right? But I want it, I want to share entire clips of these conversations so there can be no doubt also if Cujo and his girlfriend want to share any more screenshots of other those conversations i encourage them to because okay, i believe so, that this should all be public knowledge so, so i'm already understanding a little bit more of the video so that was Cujo and his girlfriend so that like this is what i'm saying like i had no idea going in so this is already making a little more sense there can be no doubt uh I, rather than taking people's words from it i would like to them just to see transparently what has happened here to give context for all of this, back in 2022, I buy a beat from BeatStars, right? For anyone who doesn't know, BeatStars is a platform that connects producers to artists who need beats. I do produce most of my own work, but I wanted to find some hip hop beats for inspiration. I, what I would usually do is buy a beat, arrange it slightly differently, tweak it myself, add my own vocals, add my own layers and stuff like that. I find this banging beat, right? Uh, from a producer called Cujo Beats, which I buy an unlimited license for. This is all very important to keep in mind for later on. All right. Unlimited copies, unlimited online audio streams, radio broadcasting arts, unlimited, unlimited. Okay, so 99 bucks for an unlimited beat. That is not bad. Right. I buy an unlimited license, which means that I am able to put it on all streaming platforms and get as many streams as I want and all recording plat on platforms like YouTube, etc. Right. After I do this, I send a uh, my YouTube guy that I work with and I send um, the publishing team an email just giving them a heads up being like yo guys uh, I bought this beat they need to be registered correctly content ID needs to be turned off I'll put a clip of that I'm putting screenshots of those messages here just in case Kujo claims I never did this I did do this I also went the extra mile and messaged the team and said look we need to credit him on Spotify credit kind of want to just read these <laughs> Wicked. It's and right, stuff cool. like that as well, because sometimes artists don't always fully credit uh, producers. I think that I 
forgot to do it in the YouTube description for like the first month or two, and then I then um, updated it, and then he was fully credited the whole time, right? That was just a, a, a lapse because there was a lot going on. I was in Canada treating and stuff. But anyway, he was credited fully, like very soon in everywhere, and as far as I was aware, registered everywhere. So I don't think anything of it, right? Also, in the Beat Stars contract, it says very clearly that the person selling you the beat has to own the beat. And if they, if there are any uh, elements of the beat that he doesn't own, he has to let you know. This is very important to remember for what is to follow as well, right? So, um, so yeah, I think there's no problems. I buy the beat. I record a song, and this is before things have blown up with my music, so I'm still pretty underground artist at this point. I record the track, put it out. I even get a message from him at some point, which is also important to remember because of the hypocrisy of this whole situation. Mm. It's like, wicked, I love the track, okay? <laughs> remember that too. Before I begin, I just want to add this. I have no problem with BeatStars. I think they're a very innovative company who actually help people make art, which I'm very, very passionate about. I think the contracts and the things you're getting into could be clearer because we're now in a situation negotiating older tracks bought from BeatStars. Um, I would love to talk to the, um, if, if anyone from there is watching, I imagine they will be at some point, I would love to talk to the uh, CEO, founder of BeatStars face to face, um, just because I want to understand how something like this could have happened, and I want to understand why it escalated the way it did, because from what I've heard, he's someone who cares a lot about artists, and someone who creates a platform like that, I think must be very passionate about music. I'd love to chat to you, all right, so real quick. So what I'm gathering so far is he buys a beat, changes it, whatever, uses it in Sick Boy, and it blows up, and everything's fine. And I'm not going to assume quite yet, but what I'm assuming is the guy who made the beat eventually realized how big the song got and wanted a bigger piece of it. It's kind of seeming what we're going to get to. We'll see. If you're if you're listening and I'd love to figure out why this happened and how we can stop things like this happening in the future um, I also think that there needs to be a bit more stringent um, Checks on if people are selling unlicensed samples because then things tend to get a little bit sticky like they have here Anyway, that's it. I've no or problem with make the beat at all. Because, and he sold it like it was um, his I'm that's worse in war with them because I think that it's really cool that there, there's a platform like that that exists for artists and producers to be connected Just thought I'd put that out there and make that clear Right, so I arrive home from Canada after a year and a half long treatment of treating brain damage and autoimmunity, which a lot of you will know if you've been following my journey. And I'm expecting a nice two weeks with my mates before I do my first ever solo show in five years because of my health. So I'm just like, I want a nice chill time. I want to be able to focus on uh, rehearsing and stuff. Very early on, I wake up to a message saying, yo, your song Sick Boy has been taken down. So I, I look at it and sure enough, it's been copyright striked from this guy Cujo Beats' his channel. And initially I'm like, oh, this just must be some automatic fuck up. So like, I don't take it too seriously. I send him a message like, yo, there must have been a technical error or something here. Okay. No response for two days. So I'm like, what's going on? So I, I, I check his channel. And then I see a comment of, of, of that beat that he licensed me, and I and I see a comment that's like, Ren has left me no choice. I'm sorry that I had to do this. And I'm like, okay, so this was intentional. Like, what? Like, the last conversation I had with this guy was months ago with him being like, yo, big up your work, it's sick. So I'm like, super confused about it. So I send him another email like, dude, what's going on? Again, I get absolutely no response. So I put a comment on his YouTube comment section, and I'm like, Bro, I'm trying to get hold of you. Why are you ignoring me? Like, I, d I just want to resolve this amicably. What's going on? I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I just want to kind of glance it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, this is really common, unfortunately. And the other common thing is the guy who usually starts this shit doesn't and okay how do i put this the guy who starts the shit if he really wants it resolved will communicate to the other person before anything goes crazy like this if it's legit if they just randomly 
copyright or whatever and then don't respond and it becomes a bigger thing than it has to be because there's no communication it's usually because the person doing it is in the wrong and they know they're in the wrong but they're trying to get like they're trying to do it and get away with it and make it so that the per the other person involved just says fuck it fine you know what i mean finally i get a response on instagram and um for the sake of this video i'm just going to put all of these responses in their full form so that there can be no doubt as to what happened i'm just going to read out like the key moments and explain the key moments but if anyone's like interested in deep diving so there can be no doubt as to what's happened here feel free to pause it um if Kujo and his girlfriend, like I said, feel like we've, I've left anything out. They're welcome to post it. I have nothing to hide about this situation. So he responds and he tells me that he's been talking to my lawyer for months, which I have no idea about. I've been in Canada. This is what I'm saying. I'm really sorry that it, that it came to this. It's like, well, then you should have said something beforehand, dude. But I'm also showing a little bias here. But like, if you were legitimately worried about it and you wanted to, like, you communicate to the person, you don't just... I'm really sorry I had to come to this. Bitch. And um, he seems like quite a nice guy initially. So I'm like, okay, maybe this has all just been a misunderstanding. I remember even saying to like Connor and that, I was like, this has probably just been a misunderstanding and something's gone wrong here. Don't worry. He sounds, seems like you're all right. Dude, we will sort this out. But then after that little exchange, I noticed a comment in the YouTube comment section on his video. saying that I'm lying about the situation okay when I thought that we like on the same page here so I pull him up on it and he's like oh no I didn't say you were lying when oh, he clearly did that should have been like the first red flag go. for me but I still give him the benefit of the doubt I was like okay maybe another misunderstanding anyway so I contact my lawyer to find out what the hell is happening because I'm in the dark about all of this situation and he explains to me that I've been sold a uh, beat with a stolen sample with an unlicensed sample and that the uh, Bulgarian sample the B Bulgarian choir sample owners um, had chased him and gone look you've used this beat without permission you've used this, sam this sample without permission um, and so you need to give us 50% of the publishing so speed. that's what happened is this guy was selling beats that he didn't make and didn't own the rights to so then the people found out who did make it and are like what the f okay so and now he's trying to cover his ass that's what's happening here okay blip and what my lawyer's done, because we were sold a beat in good faith and it wasn't actually cleared, he's, is he's reached out to Kujo and gone, look, I think you need to absorb this for selling this um, uh, in bad faith, basically. And they've gone, no, we're, we're not going to absorb that. And then it's escalated. And they've, I think because my lawyer was being slightly slow with re the responses, they uh, also keep in mind, I don't know any of this is happening right now. To get my attention, they issue a copyright strike on the video, which affects my YouTube channel, by the way, and the video gets taken down um, as a form of leverage, uh, <laughs> which is a bizarre way of dealing with things, I think, uh, because it would have been a good idea to contact me, maybe, like anyone, anyone first, if this was getting so, like, blown up, like, maybe the lawyers, maybe Cujo could have actually reached out to me, the artist, nobody did. Um, so I found that a bit bizarre. Any fucking way. Then I read a comment, another comment that- He's really trying to... First of all, how unprofessional is it to just go put comments down under videos to deal with your shit? That's not how you deal with stuff. Like, that's making your trash public. And like the one thing I saw before is I'm not trying to ruin your image. It's like, then why the fuck are you posting stuff under videos where everybody can see? Like, that's not how you deal with things in the real world. You like, at least professionally, you contact them in a private matter, email, text, whatever, usually so that there's a, a um, like with an email or a text, you have like the screenshot of it or the actual thing. So you can like go back to it if you need to in this situation exactly you don't post fucking comments like a five-year-old so this already is making it seem like this guy doesn't know how to do business the right way he is being extraordinarily unprofessional about it 
and now he's saying he's been, like i don't know this just is like so childish i don't understand I, I, I don't understand people who do shit like this. I really don't. Posted but... calling me a coward uh, to pay the royalties he's owed, and I'm like, what royalty? Uh, that's also I'm, I in my head, the publishers are just paying him the money, and now that the the situation has to change until the until everyone agrees on it. But I wasn't even privy to that conversation about what a fair split should be yet. So I was like, what? I I don't owe you. I don't owe this guy money. Like, there's no master splits on the um, Beat Stars contracts, by the way. So all money that comes in to Kuja, which should be paid to Kuja, rightly so, comes from the publisher, which is nothing to do with me, by the way. I explained this so many times in this conversation, by the way, and he's adamant to say, probably short of like 50 times, pay me my money. I am nothing to do with his money, right? So it's a very bizarre thing to keep saying, but I try to explain that to him patiently never really takes in. Anyway, he calls me a coward on this comment, so I pull him up on that. This actually starts to then rub me up a little bit. So I'm like, rub me I up. pull him up on that. It's saying like, the hell are like, cowardly? Anyway, I'm still giving him the benefit of the doubt at this point. Anyway, despite this, I feel like he's probably just misinformed. So I hold still on, hold on. Give him You know what just pissed me off? Here is a well-structured, you know, proper grammared thing yeah bet i'll edit it out like you like dude what are you 10 years old this is not how to handle professional business this is acting like a teenager bro and now he's passing the blame to your lawyer benefit of the doubt at this point anyway despite this i right. feel like he's probably just misinformed so i still take a side on it and i go on to reassure him he'll get paid his publishing money because i want him to get paid his publishing money nice doesn't affect me in any way so like i was like yeah i'll chase it up for you i let him know that i'm happy to split publishing if there's a bit of a gray area and i'm kind of really assuring him it's remember it's really important to remember this by the way guys because some, some of the lies that are posted later make me out to be really unreasonable so i'm like yo if there's if there's some simple mistake let i love the transparency that he's he's just like this is what happened here are the text here's everything this is how you prove your case is like dude here's everything you know I split the publishing it's cool I'm, I'm happy to do that yeah anyway so he comes back to me and lies more he says it's always up to the performer to clear the sample it's not it's up to the producer but unless there's been a conversation but in this case, as you can see, we're willing to make concessions for you to get your fair share. So actually, it's me making the concessions here because he sold a stolen sample. And I'm like, you know what? You can right. still have some um, publishing split, right? So like, I'm actually being the one that's been quite reasonable here. And he's flipped on his head like, we'll be good to you, you know, because I've done nothing wrong in this situation. Anyway, you shouldn't I was like, be giving me anything. And then he says, I was under the impression you would have received a warning. I had no idea that the video would be completely taken down. Another lie, as you'll see soon. He he and his uh, lawyer agreed to take this video down as a form of leverage. Um, it was our only possible negotiation tactic to get a response. Maybe message me. They're, they're scratching their head. How can we get a response? Okay, we'll take his video down, issue a copyright strike, which also I didn't actually violate the contract. Um, not intentionally. Um, so the only possible tactic, dude, message me send me an email like you've messaged me before to tell me that you love my work so like send me an email about this anyway um he says he also wants to wrap it up immediately and get the song back online another lie as you will see later on because he decides to stick to his guns and use the video as leverage anyway the plot thickens i get an email from their lawyer and um i'm not going to share it in case they start claiming I'm, sh I'm sharing things i'm not supposed to um but i get an email and it says on top of the publishing split they want a three thousand pound payment right they want a 15 percent retroactive split of the master which is nothing to do with publishing which means like 15 percent of everything the song has ever made since it came out um retroactively so since it's come out to this moment and then in, into the future when i've paid for an unlimited sa sample uh, unlimited license beep and with that you're talking money from record sales you're talking yeah, a shit ton of money fuck load of money and this is what's happening is this guy just wants a piece of the pie but what i'm not understanding and I'm, hopefully it clears up is if he sold 
a sample that wasn't his, how does he have any ground to stand on whatsoever? Like, why is the owner of the sample not going after him for selling an un... For selling something that wasn't... Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's where I'm like, how how is he even getting away with that? But to even, like, double down is... You got some big old cojones, dude. Money from streaming things. You're talking all of that when they haven't put any effort into promoting the song. He's made a beat... And he's stolen part of the beat, and he wants fifteen percent of everything the song has ever oh, made. Oh, so three thousand pounds. So he made a beat with part of that beat being stolen. So it's not the whole thing. Okay. Fans, out of principle, I wasn't going to give him that, but a because like I would may have been slightly open to negotiations if they hadn't used the song as leverage and actually treated me like a decent person. I didn't put like it lies about the situation, right? But nah, out of principle, I wasn't going to agree to that. And also to clarify, when I've been in rooms with producers and we've made a song from scratch, I've done a lot of like 50-50 splits, or I've done like 25-75, or with other collaborated artists, we just agree on a split that's like 50-50-25. So, you know, like 15% isn't outrageous, right? What's, out what's outrageous is that they already sold it with an unlimited license right from the get-go. So you go into BeatStars thinking, I'm buying an unlimited license for this much money, right? And I was broke at the time when I bought that beat. Um, so it's like, you go into the situation buying something and then later on down the line, it can come back and sting you if they go, oh, this slight thing, well, we found a loophole here, which means then now you owe us all this money, right? So it's like, it was kind of unfair because say, say you buy a painting off somebody for 10 pounds, the and then the, the price of it rises exponentially because maybe the painter dies or something or he becomes really popular. You don't then just go back to the person you sold it to and go, oh, that painting's worth like 20 times more now. Give me a bit more money for it. Yeah, because the transaction's been done. That's and that's kind of how, how I works. felt about the BeatStars thing. It wasn't about me losing money. It was about the principle of like, we've, we've stepped into this agreement and I was in full faith thinking I was buying an unlimited sample, but that's uh, unlimited license, sorry. But that's not actually what's happened, is it? Right. And it says that if I don't agree to this, they're within their right to claim 100% of the song. Look how I recent agreed. this was too. This is only like two months ago something in the contract right now this is what i breached <clears throat> apparently content id was turned on on the track okay on youtube um as you'll see from my earlier on in this video i actually specifically uh i'm getting over cold hold on requested content ID turn, was turned off and my YouTube guide did turn it off. Um, there has been something uh, to do with the distribution where somewhere along the line, even after I specifically requested this, it may have gotten turned on at some point, right? Where this doesn't actually make any money, which we've got proof of because I actually let reactors, I, I let content creators um, monetize their own videos where they're reacting to my songs. I've done this since the start because I believe that everyone should get paid. It helps promote me. I'm not losing out. Everyone's a winner. A rising tide lifts all ships, baby. So, like... Oop, I fucked up. Right there is why I love this guy. And I don't even care. So, if if, if you don't know, and a lot of you aren't going to care, so skip ahead here. For reaction videos, you have an option sometimes most of the time you don't even have an, op have an option but you can either the artist can let me have no monetization all of it so all the advertising all the ads goes right to me and they just get the promotion of me like all my viewers going here's your song right or you can share it so it's a, a split like i get some he gets some because i'm using his song i get a little bit of money they get money and the advertising cool whenever it goes to the sharing option i don't even i don't even fight it like i'm like cool works down for that when it's sometimes when it's just a straight up no you can dispute it just to see if it works out but like i'm not money chasing like this is just this channel is fun for me i like there's a lot of artists i've found on this channel that i wouldn't have otherwise so it's not really about the money but the fact that he's down for that for all of us is so genuine is a big reason why i always come back to ren dude he's such a good dude for that <clears throat> and for a lot of other reasons but that one just is kind of like all right cool it's the world they actually had something to lean on with that 
So they were like, look, if you don't uh, agree to these terms, 15% rep right, fractures... I think I skipped way too far ahead. Hold on. I, I'm like, they're using this as leverage, but legally, but thus is the world they... How far ahead did I fucking skip, bro? ...done this since the start because I believe that everyone should there get paid. Go. It helps promote me. I'm not losing out. Everyone's a winner. A rising tide lifts all ships, baby. So, like... I, I'm like, they're using this as leverage, but legally, but thus is the world, they actually had something to lean on with that. So they were like, look, if you don't uh, agree to these terms, 15% retroactive master split, um, this share on publishing, um, and a £3,000 advance against the master, uh, we're going to take 100% of what you own. At this point, I'm obviously pretty f***ing annoyed. Uh which is pretty understandable right anyway at this point they've got my attention so there's no reason they need to use the video for sick boys leverage right so i give them a fair warning i'm like mate if you don't put the video back up on friday i'm gonna have to put a public post explaining why it's down and i give him a fair warning which is also important to remember because later on he plays the victim saying that i've put a post encouraging my fans to bully him which i didn't i gave him a fair warning about it i never once encouraged them to bully him i just needed to explain why my video was down because this was proper stressing me out and i and i feel like i didn't want to be silenced about the whole situation but the time comes around i put the post out and i'm always still thinking for like a positive solution here so i have like a brainwave of like oh i've got a brilliant solution right so I approach him and I'm like, dude, look, I know that things have got complicated here, but out of principle, I don't really want to budge on the master split for this thing, but I've got a much better idea. Because a lot of my fan base are like, now giving him, because I put the public post out, a lot of my fan base are giving him grief, and I'm like, you know what, I want this guy's life to get ruined because of this, like, it's despite how f frustrated it's made me. I don't want to get. I don't want this guy to get ruined. I don't want him to get abused about it. Too I just want him to get the song back. That was Stop the thing. So I, I sent him a message. I'm like, dude, look. I thought of a thing because I, because I am a man of principle. I didn't want to bend to threats and stuff about the song being claimed 100. percent So I'm like, I've got a much better idea. Let's make a song. We'll split it 50 50 down the middle. Master publishing everything. A song from scratch. Then if we do that way, it'll be like a fuck you to the industry. Yeah, you and me on a track. Um, you'll make way more money this way because it's it's 50 50 yeah. you'll also get my fan base on your side it's going to be a great thing because i'm always like i want to look forward i don't want to look backwards i don't want to look at all these things that, that is going in the past. I'm like, out of your this is actually way make even to more. make this work and he rejected it he turned it down which i still think to this day is a bit of a silly move given what happened and what happened next but it's a shame man and if you're watching this you really should have taken that i'm sure you are watching it you really should have taken that deal it was brilliant um not only would it have set you up with way more money which is obviously what you most care about in this situation but it also got loads of my fans on your side which would also set you up for all things that you release independently as well and you'd have come out this looking good shame i offered you that olive branch i offered quite a few olive branches on numerous occasions which you weren't interested in. Then after that, there's a post on Instagram saying that I've stolen samples from people, <laughs> which is bizarre because I never have. So I send him a message being like, that he, he said that a British artist has got in touch with him and been like, Ren steal samples, which is obviously complete made up bullshit, right? So I message him about that. I'm like, what samples have I stolen? The Vera Hall one that I just put out, totally cleared. We cleared that with publishing company because I actually don't like steal my samples. And then any covers that I've done, they're just on YouTube, you're allowed to do that because there's a cover license on YouTube, so like, what are you talking about? To which he then just like, ignores it, takes the post down, and then like... Uh, <laughs> Backtracks. And then just goes on some other fucking tangent, so it's like kind of grasping at straws here to make me look like the bad guy. So we arranged to have this call with the lawyers and Cujo, and I'm actually really excited to have the call because it's the first time I can talk to Cujo face to face, deal, deal with this like grown-ups, like adults, and talk to each other. Um, but it's not how it pans out. So we get on the call, and the first thing that happens is the lawyer just says, look, Ren, I think that you taking this public was very unprofessional. And I was like, hold on a second. I wasn't the person who took this public, first of all. Like, taking the video down is a an aggressive move. And also, I didn't take it public, first of all. Kucha was commenting countless things on his YouTube before I even made the comment. A, calling me a liar, a coward, a numb. So, like... To say that I took this public, nah, I just responded right. to what happened and then explained to my fans while the song was down. Those posts are still up for everyone to see. All the posts on his comments are, are still uh, there for everybody to see. So first of all, it was kind of like, we got into it straight away with me like having to be like... Defending yourself. I put yourself it straight right in the middle and was like, okay, yeah, fair enough. 
The funniest thing about that call is Cujo was on it. He did not say a single word. Even when I like addressed him with questions, his, his lawyer would interject and go, I can answer that. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to talk to the person who's like, <laughs> you know, like an adult. I want to talk to this person. Um, and then my lawyer even, there's even a moment where my lawyer's like, look, I want to address this, this uh, question to Cujo. Do you actually feel like this fit situation is fair? He says nothing and the lawyer interjects again. So for that whole call, which, you know, took about half an hour, 40 minutes, he didn't say a single word. And I thought that was disrespectful. Uh, well, given the circumstances. Yes, but his, his lawyer also 100% said, we're going to go into this call. You're not going to say a word. I'm going to talk for you. That was a prearranged thing. Circumstances. <laughs> he later said, claimed that it was because he doesn't legally know enough and it should be between the lawyers. But no, man. Like... Regardless of your legal knowledge, we can still have a conversation like adults. Like I'm not, I'm not here to try and like intimidate or anything like that. I want to talk to you, like a grown up, brother. And um, and that didn't happen. I, I wasn't afforded that luxury. I was talking a fair bit on that call about how I felt about the situation and what I felt was right. And I also said on that call that I didn't think that a retroactive split was right, um, because of all the re reasons I've mentioned. But it is what it is, man. And then we came off the call, and I felt pretty let down by it to be honest this is where the plot gets even more ridiculous and i'm sorry this is a long video guys but <laughs> this is mad and this is emotionally exhausting this bit so i read a bunch of comments on instagram from this person talking about the contract saying things that aren't actually in the contract i'm like who the f is this so i message him and be like yo by the way you're misinformed the contract actually doesn't state uh that it's on me to clear the samples then I click on the profile i realize that it's cujo's girlfriend so i immediately unsend all those messages because to be honest Look, he was getting grief from my fans, and I think to myself, you know what? He needs someone supporting him, even though that he's been an asshole. I don't want to like start messaging his girlfriend. The devil's shit, advocate in I'll him right now. Out of this. But she sees that I've unsent the messages, and she instigates the conversation, says, have you done an oopsie? We start chatting for a long time. We'll put those messages up so that you can read it. It actually ends up being, it seems... Oh, here we go. Yep. To me, like it's like semi amicable after a while of talking to each other. Like we we sh you can pause this and read this if you want. It's like basically the long and short of it is is like she feels like Cujo has been misrepresented and and feels like it's a lot of the industry's fault, my lawyer's fault and stuff like that, which is kind of what Cujo feels like, right? She then threatens to break my kneecaps, which. Even though it's a little bit out of pocket, you know me, I laugh about it. The thing is, the thing that rubs me up about things like that is, if that had been the other way around, I never actually once got violent about this situation. If that had been the other way around, they would have been like, be over right there. such a violent, later on, they would have been like, ran such a violent person or using bully tactics, because they've s spoken about like how I'm using bully tactics by simply talking about the situation publicly, transparently. She also gaslights me by saying, you know, like, imagine what would have happened if he had mental health issues. I have a very long list of mental health issues. I am the person with mental health issues. You're not considering what it does to my mental health, are you, when you take down a song that means that much to me? Uh, a song that I've, I've poured into, that I'm exposing a part of me that's very vulnerable uh, about my health journey. Like, you're not considering that, are you? All I've done is post publicly about um, about the situation. I've never told anybody to send you guys abuse or anything like that. And actually, if anybody's watching this right now for, clarif for clarity, even though I am very annoyed about the situation, I don't want anyone to send them abuse. I don't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm annoyed about the situation, but it's done now. The song's down. It's gone. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I don't... I'm not in trying to ruin somebody's... This is what I'm saying. He's playing devil's advocate so much here that it's almost like, bro, you need to, like, look out for yourself a little bit. Like, I don't know. Some people are like, blah, blah, blah. some people are like that though, where they're always just looking for like the whatever you want to call it. Um the good in the situation. Like everyone has a good side kind of thing. But like there comes to a, uh, there comes a point where it's like, alright, devil's advocate shit goes out the window, just get this done and move on kind of thing. And he's just got a bigger heart than me. Because at this point, I'd be like, bro, go to hell. Like, stop. You know? Life over this. I'll have my own form of revenge, as you'll see at the end of this video. But 
I'm not trying to ruin anyone's life over this. So, like, if they say to me that I'm trying to incentivize stuff like that, I'm not, guys. I don't want you to go and abuse them, right? But it is up to me to talk about this situation fairly. So, like, we seem to make some middle ground. She's even talking to me about, like, her ADHD and knows that I've got ADHD and, like, you know, maybe we've just got... So, I'm like, you know what? She seems pretty level-headed, right? So, like, cool. You know what? Maybe these guys are... It's just a big misunderstanding and we can figure a way to amicably sort this out. And I say to her, look, yeah, I'm happy to split the publishing, but I don't really want to split the master out of principle because I bought this, right? You know, but... I then, at this point, I start being like, you know what? Maybe I'll split some of the master for the future stuff just to get this out of the way. Even though I don't believe I should because they've stolen the beat with a stolen sample, I'm like... If this just gets this over the line, I'm happy to split the future they're, master. They're just trying to in the email take advantage to the lawyers and stuff, right? This is where I think they've realized that he's a very giving, caring, big-hearted person. So now they're just trying to take advantage to get something out of it, I think. So I'm, like, I'm conceding a little bit here because I just want this situation done with. We end on a good note in this conversation. Then the next morning, <laughs> I wake up to post from her all over my Reddit lying about the contract and then I see a comment on Anthony Ray's video where he's talking about the situation from her saying this is what the contract says and she made up some she wrote a whole passage that wasn't even in our contract it was completely made up so after her being super nice to me behind the scenes in this conversation and feeling like we read I wake up to read this and I'm like I start losing my mind because I'm like these guys they're like they pretend they're on my side and then it's just like they publicly post all this stuff so I'm like I put her up on it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, first of all, this is defamation. You can't be out here, like, making up stuff that's not even in the contract, you know? So she's like, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Right, so next, I find a bunch of messages on Reddit from Cujo's girlfriend lying about the contract, which I'm going to put up here, which is actually very illegal, by the way. Um, no, I won't be pressing charges over it. I would just want to get this situation out of the way, but... Um, You're too nice. <sighs> So I'm just going to put all these up for you to pause and read if you want to. It's ridiculous, basically. Um, she also says that I was obviously upset, so I wasn't the most cooperative. As you guys, if you skip back in this video, you'll see I was extremely cooperative when I found out what was going on. I was being very amicable when I was trying to offer Cujo solutions and being amazingly supportive and sympathetic. I refuse to fully acknowledge that a mistake on my end causing Cujo not to get paid was at the heart of all of this. It wasn't a stolen sample was at the heart of all of this. Yes, the, the, the publishers, right, failed to correctly register Cujo, which wasn't anything to do with me. They've now remedied that and there'll be a back payment for whatever percentage we end up on. No money's been lost here, right? That is something that was the publisher's fault, which I was very annoyed about, which I actually sent a message to the publishers about explaining how annoyed I was about that situation, fighting for Cujo in that, when I didn't have to fight for Cujo because he was being a prick, right? <laughs> so I sent that message to them anyway, fighting on Cujo's side, because despite all of this, I am a man of principle still, right? I kept threatening to sue and go public. No, I didn't. I wasn't threatening to sue. Um, I did say I would go public if my song carried on uh, being used as leverage. I gave them a very fair warning because they didn't need to use the song, the video as leverage, and they kept on doing that. That was because I kept getting hundreds of messages a day from my fans being like, where's the video, where's the video? And I wanted to address it all at once. And I also felt like I was being treated extremely unfairly. Right? Um... Oh, this sucks. <laughs> oh, God, don't get sick, people. I had to accept by giving up all my shares of the song exchange for a fixed fee. Um, yeah, that was sent between my lawyers. Ren took in public the next morning. Yes, I did. What's the same? Oh my god, this sucks. Ah. <coughs> I didn't have to pause it. He left it there long enough for me to... <coughs> Right, let's take this home now. At this point, I've just lost all amicability, right? I'm pissed off. I, I messaged Cujo's girlfriend and him saying, it's the first time I've threatened to sue, but I'm like, if I see any more lies from you guys about this situation, I will sue you guys. Um, because it's like, about that's damn my time, public dude. image. Like, I pride myself on the fairness that I show everyone that I work with, right? And, and my principles, and I'm also very against greed and I stand against it militantly which a lot of you will know from my work and how I treat people 
how I treat people that I work with, right? So them spreading this stuff that I'm trying to be greedy here massively hurts my public image. So I was like, if you guys lie any more about this, yeah, I'm going to do something about it, basically. And then I'm talking to Cujo and things get more heated. We get another email from my <clears throat> lawyer saying, you know, like... If you won't agree to our terms, we will take 100% of the song. That's where we stand on it. That is final. If you do not agree to this retroactive master split, we're taking everything. So I messaged back. I'm going to show you that email. I messaged back, essentially summarizing this email. I just say, I'm going to take down the song myself. I'm fed up of this. I'm fed up of you threatening me with my own song that I poured myself into. I've explained what it means to me. I explained to both of them what it means to me. So I'm like, I'm taking it down myself. I don't want to let them win over this. I, I've been in situations in the music industry before where I had to concede because I was broke and I just had to let a powerful, greedy person win over me. You know, like, and I know this is not the same situation. It's not like Cujo is like, like this in this huge position of power here. But how they've dealt with this whole situation was ridiculous. So I was like, rather than like bend to this leverage and just out of principle I'm just going to take the song off and it's ironic man because the song is about greed you know and it hurts me a lot that it's down now it proper hurts me man. I, I, I can't stress that enough because of what the song was and what the song meant to me but that's the way the cookie crumbles so I, I sent these emails I also send a mass email out to everybody the publisher uh, Cujo uh, the lawyers involved just saying how disappointed I am across the board even from people on my side, I was just disappointed at how this whole situation been uh, dealt with because ultimately at the core of this situation, the only person getting proper hurt financially from this is me, right? Because of my hard work that I've done to promote this music, because of my story and how that's been exploited. I'm the person who will suffer future losses for the earnings and the, regardless of earnings, fuck earnings for a second. That song I was proud of, what it meant to people I was proud of. Uh, the messages that I get from people every day uh, telling me like uh, how much they relate to the song how much it helps them through difficult times you know like that's gone now that's taken away from people so yeah I'm pissed off anyway so I send that email yep. out me and Cujo <clears> share some <throat> pretty their asses. words uh, if you're a petty person you'll probably like to pause on some of this it's ridiculous hold on I kind of want to read this words uh, if And get my bag. So he's literally like, no, don't. He's almost basically saying, please don't take the video down. I want my money. If you're a petty person, you'll probably like to pause on some of this. It's ridiculous. Uh One of the things that took the piss the most that he said uh, when I, you know, I just lost my call at this point. I lost all patience. Oh, God, now he's playing the please. I'm sorry. One of the funny things he said after all this was like, if you really cared about your fans, then you would leave them the song. So he was turning it around on me when he'd used the song as leverage. He said, if you cared about your fans, you'd leave it up for them. Then he said, you're letting my, I'm letting my pride and ego get in the way because I'm not paying him money that I didn't think he deserved for selling a stolen He's trying right? everything he can do to have Ren keep the song up so he can get some sort of money because he knows if Ren just takes the song down, he loses altogether. 
he's saying that that's my <clears> ego <throat> it's my ego's fault and then he's just saying he kept saying just pay me let me get my bag I want the money just give me my money I explained to him I explained to him again like dude I'm not the person that pays you the money I've explained this to you so many times it's the publisher and he's like alright cool it finally seems to sink in that like I haven't stolen this man's money. Yeah. I haven't taken a penny of this man's money. The publisher was at fault for not registering it properly and they're re resolving that and then he'll get his money from the publishing. I don't want a penny of that. I don't care about that money. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. He deserves a bit of money for making that part of the beat. Sure. He shouldn't have stolen uh, a sample and sold it to me. He, theoretically, he could have all of his publishing taken away. But even after all of this, I still agreed to give him a bit of a publishing split just to shut him up, man. So it's like... I could have been even more petty and dug my feet in there, but I just want the situation over with. So the song's down. <sighs> the funniest comment that I'm going to end this on, because this is going to be some uh, album artwork, by the way. <laughs> uh, single artwork, sorry. This is the next announcement. He goes, all right, peace. Your music sucks, by the way. Which is really funny, considering... Um, you know the message earlier where he told me that it was an honor or it was like it was really good to work with me you know funny it's funny hypocritical <laughs> funny 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 but yeah sure my music sucks brother cool that's gonna be uh the single artwork which leads me to my last point ladies and gentlemen i'm releasing a song about this whole situation and it's dedicated to cujo and it's coming out next week it's coming out a week today. It's called Cujo Beatdown. Um, and I love it. We made an amazing video for it. I made a beat. By the way, the beat has no unlicensed samples in it. I made the whole thing myself. <laughs> I wrote all the lyrics myself, all the beats are mine. <clears throat> and that'll be going up on YouTube and Spotify next week. I'll also be recreating Sick Boy because those lyrics and that arrangement is mine. So for the anniversary of Sick Boy, the album, you will be getting <clears> Sick <throat> Boy, the beat, remade, bigger and better than ever so he's without gonna, Cujo's input. That's such a good move. He's going to just make his own beat to go under Sick Boy. That is so smart, dude. He probably had that in his mind the whole time too of like, <clears throat> why am I even doing this? just take the song down i'll just redo it with my own beat fuck it it's over right that's hilarious put on it so look forward to that as well and then there's also a third song dropping there's a little bit more positive <clears throat> next week's song is angry all right i'm just going to warn you there yes and it is. before kujo and his like that they before they start complaining about blah 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 artistic license here you know what I've said my piece. I'm not. I'm not interested in ruining your life, bro. But I felt like I needed to get it out somehow, and so I got it out somehow. And I hope you're watching this, man. And I hope you enjoy the song because it's dedicated to you, baby. <laughs> anyway, guys, I know that this was a long video, but I wanted there to be no doubt as to where everything stood in this situation and why you don't have a song that means so much to so many people and means so much to me. But. There will be a revamped version of that song coming very soon, guys. And um, if you've made it this far, thank you. Sincerely. And um, I hope there can be no doubt as to this situation. Thank you. All right, cool. All right. Now I 100% understand that damn song and it just makes it so much better holy shit all right so essentially what i got out of that is this dude oops all right this dude makes a song or, or uh hold on i gotta sneeze oh this cold is killing me guys it's not even, it's like on the way out. It's just now I got sneezies. Um, Ren, Ren gets a beat from this guy who didn't own the rights to it or the rights to part of it or whatever the fuck. Guy doesn't seem to care. Everything's fine. But then he sees how big the song blew up and wants money for it, which is not how that works. 
because Ren bought the license to it, but he didn't own the license because it wasn't his beat. So a whole wishy-washy thing there. Fine. My favorite part of the whole thing, though, is how money-hungry Cujo is, is because the whole time you can kind of tell he knows that he's not really entitled to any of this money, but he's trying to find a way to just get in there and get some and get out. That's like the whole thing. That's why when Ren was like, I'm just going to take the song down. So this is over. Kudo's like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Maybe we can work this out. We'll do something here. And Ren's like, no, dude, we're done. And that's when Kudo gets pissed because he knows he lost. It's over. So the whole thing is a greedy money grab. And it's just pathetic, man. I hate people who do shit like that. It's like, we're all supposed to be in the music together, same team. And that's just not how a lot of people work. This is not uncommon, unfortunately. So I give Ren a lot of credit for sticking to his guns here. And he's right. It's, it's the right thing to do. Just be done with it. And now he can just put his own beat under it and now he's got a song that he owns 100% you know what I mean it's the best way to do it so this was really cool I'm sorry it was a little longer but not for nothing if you guys clicked on it you knew it would be so I hope you guys enjoyed this definitely made the the song Cujo beat down make more sense and make it honestly a lot better because I have context to it so that was cool all right, cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed, man. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. I think Ren did the right thing. I think if anything, Ren was too good about it. He should have sued the fuck out of them for defamation. But that's that's just, that's up to him. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the merch store, everything is linked down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, stay happy, stay healthy. Later.